Today in our series on marine electrical systems, Don Ely gets us into terminal end fittings and foolproof ways to make them last. What we're trying to accomplish here is match the size of the barrel in the connector to the appropriate gauge of wire so that when we crimp this down, we have a good crimp. Connector terminal end colors are matched to wire gauge. So 10 and 12 gauge wire, we use yellow. 14, 16 gauge wire, we're going to use blue terminals. This is just the convention that's there. And when we get down to 18 gauge or 20 gauge wire, we're going to use red terminals, regardless of the wire color. Connectors are not designed to match the wire. In this particular case, the yellow is with the yellow. But if we use this on a too small of a gauge of wire, what we're going to find is that that doesn't fill that barrel arrangement fully and when we crimp it we don't get a good connection. First what we're going to do is we're going to strip the insulation off the end of the wire so that the wire will fit up into the barrel of the terminal for crimping. And we've got a couple of different tools here that we can do that with. The first ones I'm going to introduce you to are the ones that we're going to use to strip the wire. And in this particular arrangement here you can see the wire gauge is listed over here on the right hand side and we're going to be stripping 10 gauge wire first It'll actually give us the amount that we should strip in depending on what we're stripping. And so we'll put this into the 10 gauge. We can squeeze down on that. You rotate it a little bit and then give it a pull. And we've stripped the insulation off the wire. What's really important there is that we use the correct stripping arrangement so that we don't break any of the fine strands off. You can see none of the strands are left in the insulation. We have all the strands left here. I like to give it just a little twist like that. And now we're ready to crimp it. And I've got a couple of different crimp ends here that we're going to look at. One is a, again a standard nylon crimp end. You can look right through the end of it. Uh, and we insert the wire in there. And the wire actually you can see there it is um, coming out the end of it, and then we would crimp this uh, particular end. This is a, a heat shrink end, and the wire doesn't stick all the way through. It's sealed with this heat shrinkable casing. In that case, we're going to insert it into the, into the terminal end, and then we'll crimp it also. But notice that the end of the wire is not exposed. So this type of terminal is really great for marine use because we keep moisture completely out of this. And we'll look at how we do a heat shrink end here in a minute. A Couple of other wire stripping devices that are out there that are pretty handy. Um, this one here, uh, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna hold the wire and then strip the insulation off on the other side. So in this particular case, we're gonna be, uh, again, 10 gauge wire. There's the amount that I want to strip off. As I close that, it holds the wire, and then as I squeeze this, it pops it right off and uh, does a pretty nice job of stripping the end of the wire. Again, we haven't broken any of those strands of the wire. I like that one a little better. I'm going to introduce you to a, another one here. This one is kind of neat in that uh, it automatically adjusts to the wire gauge that you're stripping. And this part of the tool here uh, is adjustable to determine how much of the insulation you strip off. So this one's pretty neat in that you just put the wire in to the stop. Uh, the little jaws come down. And when you pull on it, it strips the insulation off the wire. Again, not being detrimental to any of those fine strands of the wire. Any one of those three work really well. What we're going to do next then is to crimp the terminal end onto the stripped portion of the wire. In this case we're using one of the open barrel style terminals. Slide the wire up into the barrel there. And we're going to take this style crimper and it's color coded also as per the terminals. So since this is a 10 gauge wire we're using a yellow terminal end and we're going to use that set of jaws appropriately. What we want to do is get that set up in there before we crimp it so we know that the wire is all the way in there. And then as we push down on that, we're going to crush that barrel. And that's going to get our wire crimped good and tight into that terminal end. We still have the challenge with the moisture getting in there, but if this is out of the bilge or something, this is a totally appropriate crimp for that gauge wire. Next, we want to crimp a heat shrink bowl style. The heat shrink does nothing for the strength of the connection or the electrical connection. It's strictly to keep the moisture out. So here we have, uh, again, another 10 gauge. So we're going to use the yellow. Again, it's going to be inserted up 
into the barrel portion of the terminal. And in this particular case, we're going to use a different heavier duty crimp arrangement, but notice that it's coated exactly the same way. We've got yellow, blue, and red color coding. So this opens. We're going to insert terminal in there, align it with the jaws, and then this one actually crimps until it releases to get the proper crimping pressure. And so now that's that barrel is crimped. We've maintained a moisture seal here. So heat shrinkable terminal end. We'll bring the heat gun on here and kind of rotate it like you were roasting a marshmallow. And as it gets warm here, you can see the shrinks right up around, tight up around the wire. And now we've got a real, really excellent, uh, not only crimp connection, but a seal so that we can't get any moisture into those strands of the wire. So the most appropriate place for this type of connection would certainly be with a bilge pump or any place where we're going to see uh, you know, moisture. I like using this everywhere on the boat, to tell you the truth, uh, because then if there is moisture somewhere, we've got a well-sealed connection and we're not worrying about that. I wanted to introduce you a little bit to what some of you may be familiar with, which are called wire nuts. You see these a lot in home use, home wiring, and they're appropriate for that. Remember when we talked about single strand type 1 wire? Uh, this, this is what they're designed for, and they're appropriate for that. However, in the marine environment, wire nuts have no use at all. The American Boat and Yacht Council and the U.S. Coast Guard actually prohibit the use of wire nuts. And that's a function of, of, of them not being able to deal with the vibration that you might find on board a vessel. And so you'll see people jam a couple wires in there, tighten those wire nuts up onto that, and then we have a vibration problem. So let's look at actually connecting the, the wires themselves to the uh, terminal block or bus. When we have a, a group of wires all tied in common like we do here, this is the negative side, uh, that's called a bus. And I'm going to show you first, I guess, uh, a connection that, that is inappropriate. So we've made a really nice uh, connection up here, we've crimped it well, uh, but we've chosen the wrong eye size on the on the terminal end. And you can see that if we hook this up, while it might come tight, we've got a really lousy connection there. And of course this can flop all around on the, on the terminal. So not only do we need to determine the right gauge wire for the application, we need to determine the right uh, color coding for the crimp and we also need to determine the uh, appropriate um, eye size in the end of the terminal. So in that particular case, that would be too large of a terminal even though the rest of it is appropriate. Here's one where we've chosen the correct size um, eye. And that's a much snugger fit, and we tighten that down, and now we've got an excellent um, connection in that particular case. I want to demonstrate also uh, a wire uh, terminal end that's inappropriate, and I think most of you have seen this. This is the horseshoe uh, arrangement, uh, again, fairly typical of an automotive installation, um, and it really is inappropriate for um, marine use also. And the reason gets back to this vibration issue again. Simple to connect, which makes it kind of handy to have. Just slides underneath the screw and then can be tightened up. And actually as long as the connection stays tight, that would be fine. The challenge is that if this screw vibrates a little bit loose, what we're going to find is that this can come off really quite easily. And so again, this is uh, an inappropriate terminal in uh, for marine use. What we want to do in marine use is always use uh, an eye type terminal so that if the connection does get loose at all uh, we don't lose that connection. Next stop down the road in our series Don gets us into the DC panel itself and starts to bring it all together. We'll see you then.